Hey guys, welcome to today's video. If you're new, thanks for stopping by my channel. I really appreciate it. We are working on a bot for World of Warcraft, and not just any bot, but an artificial intelligence computer vision based bot. So what you can see here is I have the bot that we've been working on, guys. So we have our health. We have our health tracking bar here. Uh, what I've added is a zone text uh, basically calculator. So what it's doing is, is it's looking at this uh, map text up here and we're uh, doing some pre-processing on the image so that it's a little bit easier and then we are converting that into a string. We're basically doing text recognition and once we generate that string we're able to put that into our computer vision window. So putting it in the window is one thing that's nice but once we have that once we have that value as a string we'll be able to use that for determining the location of our character so you can see here if I run out of Northshire Valley and into Elwyn Forest you can see that this uh, pre-processed image which comes from up here this updates to, to Elwyn Forest and Elwyn Forest is now the zone variable so this is a great way for us to track the location of our character at any point in time. So let's jump into the code and let's look at implementing this. And if you're interested in this content, if you enjoy artificial intelligence and machine learning and World of Warcraft and gaming, then consider liking and subscribing. I'd appreciate that. So let's jump into the code. Okay guys, let's get started. So go ahead and create a new Python file called Map Reader. That's what I'm calling mine. And I've disabled my uh, spell casting. My button presses in the healbot.py. I don't want to deal with any button presses right now, so I'd advise you to do the same. You don't have to, but it could get annoying. So in mapreader.py, this is where we're going to do our map reading, obviously. And we're going to want to import a new library. We're going to want to import PyTesseract. This is a library that we haven't worked with yet, and I don't think I've discussed it on my channel yet at all. So <laughs> If this isn't installed on your system, make sure you do so using a pip command. So you're going to do pip install pi tesseract, tesseract like the 5D cube or whatever. So make sure you get that package installed. Uh, we're also going to be using the NumPy library today. And we're going to be using CV2, which is the open CV library. So get those three imports going. And we're going to create a function called get current zone. And we're going to pass in the image of our screen capture. Okay, let me just put pass in there for a moment. So let's look at an image from World of Warcraft, the game. So let me open up an image real quick. Okay, so here I've got a screenshot from World of Warcraft uh, opened up in GIMP here. And we, there's a lot of different ways we could try to figure out where our character is in the world. And we might want to get more advanced uh, as we go along with this series. But for, the, for right now, we wanna, I want to capture in a string the zone that the player's in. That's a great starting point, and that's probably the most important thing is for, our, for our bot to know, for our AI. If the AI knows what zone it's in, that's going to give a lot of information about the world. So we would know what types of enemies to look for, what types of quests, what type of NPCs are there. So knowing the zone is really a huge part of, of localization. So my initial thought was, let's use the same information that a regular player would use. If they were just starting the game, yes, they can open the map and all that. But basically our zone is known right here at all times. So we're gonna steal that, and later we can actually steal the time and stuff too, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna take a sub picture, we're gonna take a slice out of this picture and feed it into PyTesseract for text recognition. And from the text recognition, we're gonna get back the string, the name of the zone that we're in. So we're gonna to wanna to slice out this part of the image here. So you can imagine that if I line this up right, inside of this rectangle here, if I could get this slice, because sometimes the name will be longer, it'll hang over here. If I can get this slice of image and feed that into PyTesseract, I should be able to get exactly our, no, our zone name very reliably. So that's what we're gonna do. So 
what I did was, and you're going to want to check this on your machine, I looked at the exact pixel coordinates here and here, and I made note of those, and I'm going to use those in my programming. So if your screen, if your monitor resolution is different, or if the location of your GUI is different, your pixels may not be in exactly the same space as mine. So just be, be careful. Take a quick screenshot and locate this rectangle so that you're you know working in the right part of the uh, image. So that's that's all we need from uh, from from here. So let's go back to the code now. Okay, so I'm back in the code. So the image that we're going to pass in is the overall screenshot. And now what we want to do is we want to pre-process that. So pre-process is a fancy word for we want to slice it. We might want to change the colors. We might want to blur it. We might want to unblur it. There's lots of different processes that we can do for different things. But for right now, the first thing we want to do is we want to get that slice of just that little sliver of information. So that's what we're going to slice out first. So I'm going to define two variables, top left. That's the top left point of my uh, rectangle. And on my monitor, it was 1700 by five. Again, yours might be different. And the bottom right corner on mine was 1850 by 19. Okay, so that's basically the rectangle. Now, what we want to do is we want to pull that slice out of the image. And the image is stored as a NumPy array. Remember, CV2 basically stores our images as NumPy's arrays. So here's how we're going to slice out that part of, from a NumPy array. We're going to put in our uh, we're going to call this, I'll call this my zone uh, name image. And I'm going to take my image and I'm going to do a slice. So I'm going to put in a square bracket and I'm going to say I want to do top left one because that's going to be my X coordinate to, or sorry, my, uh, that's my row. So that's my vertical. That's why I'm starting with the one index. The one index is five, five pixels from the top. But because the image is rows by columns, rows is, vert is vertical. So that's why we're starting with index one here. So top left one to bottom right one. So that's that first slice. Oops, one. So I'm going from five to 19 rows, comma, and then I want to, oops, I don't want to hit run there. So comma, oops, I did it again. Okay, so again, sorry, five and 19 is my Y coordinates. So I'm gonna take five, rows five and 19 from that image, from that NumPy array. And next I wanna do my, my columns. So I'm gonna say top left zero to bottom right zero. So that's, that's my slice, that's that slice of that image. So that's very easy. And, re and the nice thing about NumPy is it's a very fast operation. These are very fast operations, which is good. Okay, now we could directly put this into PyTesseract. So, uh, and the function for that is very simple. So we could say zone, we'll say that this is our zone text, is going to equal PyTesseract dot image to string. And we're just going to put in our image, which is we're calling it our zone name image, that slice. Now we could just do this and then we can just return zone. Now, the only problem with this is that if you if you look at this, if you look at if you remember that screenshot, it's not going to be very standardized. Um, you know, there's going to be different colors, different brightnesses. Uh, so it's not it's not a good image to use for text recognition because there's maybe you got yellow on yellow or whatever. So what we want to do is we want to pre-process that. Now pre-processing is a little bit special. So depending on the size of the image, we may want to blur it and then we might want to do what's called eroding it. We might want to find canny, which is the edges. But in this case, because the, the image is so small, we're taking a really, really small uh, pixel size here. A lot of those operations aren't going to help us a lot. Like blurring isn't going to help us because we've only got, you can see that we've only got about 15 pixels of height. So if we blur it, we're basically going to, going to ruin the information. So we're going to do a lot less pre-processing than what we would normally do on an image that has maybe a little bit more higher resolution uh, pictures of, uh, of characters. So just keep that in mind. So we're going to do a, a very small amount of pre-processing. Basically, we are just going to convert this to uh, first to a grayscale image. 
So right now it's BGR. We want to convert it to grayscale. That will help. So we're going to, we'll just uh, overwrite the zone image. So let's go back to zone name image. So we're going to convert this to grayscale. So we're going to do cv2.convert color, cvt color, convert color. We're going to put in our source matrix, which is our image. So zone name image. That's our source. Uh, and next we want to do cv2 dot color and we'll do b g r 2 gray there it is okay so what this is going to do is this is going to take our bgr image slice bgr image so we're slicing it and we're converting it to grayscale Okay, next, there's one more operation that I tested that, that helped, even though this image size is quite small. So some of the other pre-processing activities did not help. But one thing that did work quite well for me was thresholding. So we'll do cv2.threshold, and we're gonna put in our, our image again. So our zone name image, we're putting that back in. We'll say 0, 255, cv2.threshold binary, plus cv2.thresh.otsu and one. Okay, so let's look at what we have here now. This is, this is a pretty good start. So this function is gonna take our big, our big screen capture image in. It's gonna slice out the map name. We're gonna pre-process it by converting it to grayscale and then converting it to a binary image, white and black only. And then we're gonna use that for PyTesseract to do image recognition, or sorry, text recognition. We're gonna save that as a string and return that string. So basically all of this will, will take that image and it'll say, here's the zone that we're in. So let's go back to AIScreenCapture.py and let's start using this. So we first need to import our new library so we'll import map reader and we want to probably save the location of our player in uh, you know in the uh, as a self uh, parameter as a as a variable so we'll say self dot zone so this is the zone that the player's in right now is equal to none we'll initialize that as none during the initialization but we're going to populate that in a moment here so when we get into our while loop which is here. So this is our image, this is our screen capture. We can now say self.zone equals, and we can now call that map reader. So we can say map reader dot get current zone, and let's pass in the image that we just uh, created here, self.image. We're passing in our image and we're gonna get back the zone and we're gonna save that as a variable so our character knows where it is at all times. Perfect. Okay, so now let's display that zone on the uh, computer vision so we know it's working properly. Uh, but before we do that, there's a couple of, of things that I wanna to do to the string to process the string. So the first thing is, um, it's better if you know that you're, if you standardize your strings to all lowercase. And the reason is, or you could do all uppercase, but usually lowercase is the, the norm. The reason is, if we're doing different types of things, if we know everything is always a lowercase string, that's gonna make it a lot easier for us to match words and things like that. And there's really no reason for us to capitalize text in variables. There's no advantage to that for us from a backend perspective. So first thing we wanna do is, is make everything lowercase. The other thing we want to do is we want to strip out any white space characters that might be in there. So if the if the uh, text recognition maybe adds an extra tab or if it infers a space that, that maybe shouldn't be there, we want to get rid of that junk. So we're going to also strip out all the white characters so we're just left with the name, hopefully, that's the goal. So we're going to say self.zone equals self.zone. So this is the string we just created dot lower so this uh, lower is going to uh, convert it, it takes a string and it turns the the lowercase uh, value of that string and then we'll say dot strip 
Let me make sure I got this right. So we'll say string. Yeah, that's right. We don't need to convert it to a string because it should already be a string. I just wanted to make sure we had the right syntax there. So we've got a uh, self.zone. We're going to take the lowercase of that. We're going to strip out the, the unnecessary white space stuff. Okay. Now, now what we want to do is we want to go down and we want to add this uh, as text to our image. So let's shoot down here and right underneath where we have CV put uh, text, our health. This is where we're putting our health. Let's um, add a new section. Okay, for the string now, we want to use zone is self.zone. We'll make this a formatted string. Okay, and let's change the color. Uh, the map text is yellow, so let's make this yellow. And I believe this should work, so let's give it a try. Okay, sorry, I accidentally somehow deleted these two lines of code, so don't delete our, our computer vision lines. And also, I forgot to shift our text down by 50 pixels. So let's make this 150 pixels down so it doesn't overwrite the other text. And let's try this now. Okay, so it looks like it's working. So we got our zone here. And you can see when I move my health bar up to where that map is, it says health bar. So that's good. That looks like it's working well. Well, thanks for joining me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video and consider liking and subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.